It's now been four years since that fateful winter night that BBC Three, the youth channel of Britain's public broadcaster, died on TV and was shelled off online. Many cried murder given the way the BBC was actively devaluing it ahead of its demise, giving the impression that the Beebs required public consultation was simply just going through the motions. Now that the damage is done, and as other public broadcasters across Europe look to make similar moves, the BBC is suffering a closure's remorse. I still remember the night of February 16th, 2016, the night BBC Three sang its final swan song. James Corden of American Late Night TV fame introduced the channel's final official program, the one he created, wrote, and starred in himself in the UK before he reached fame here, Gavin and Stacey, one of the most wildly popular series BBC Three ever made. Of course, they had to run some more programming over the next month and a half to satisfy the likes of Sky while they were running their Barker Loop, but that doesn't exactly count. I've talked about the martyrdom of BBC Three before, which I'll link in the description if you want the full story, but in the years since I've made that video, things haven't improved much. The BBC's Director General at the time, Tony Hall, said as the move online was about to take place, I was with the team briefly last week, and the atmosphere is really magic. It's exciting. It feels a bit like a startup. I love the feeling of going and being with the BBC Three team. It feels creative, energetic, and mischievous as well just as it should be. If the then new online BBC Three was a startup, it could be argued that the service has been reduced to little more than its minimum viable product. The BBC Three website, since I've last seen it, has built a bit more of a focus on long form content, but the focus is on comedy and documentaries now, which, while important parts of BBC Three's offering in the past, aren't the most representative of the spectrum of offerings they once had. And even when these shows do get multiple seasons, or series in British parlance, they're only a few episodes each, just four or five episodes apiece for the most part, low even for the already small runs UK content likes to have. Back when BBC Three was first moved online, there were stipulations put in place to ensure the long-form content would still have a home. Grand promises were made to air BBC Three content on BBC One and BBC Two. This manifested in a string of frequently shifting time slots starting well after 10.30pm and sometimes even near midnight, effectively an afterthought after BBC One and Two served their regular audiences for the day. This was meant to be rectified in a sweeping change to how BBC Three content was scheduled, with the creation of a new, specially branded BBC Three programming block launched on BBC One in early 2019, running Monday through Wednesday evening immediately after the BBC News at 10, admittedly still a 10.35 start time, but certainly better positioned and more consistently placed than previously. This proved a failure too. The low rating time slots attracted few younger viewers and alienated older ones, leading to a drop in BBC One's ratings overall. Despite the ad consistency, BBC Three linear outing, and the young viewers the brand is meant to serve, are still being treated as a scheduling afterthought. Less and less of BBC Three's output overall is getting broadcast through the BBC's other television channels, hampering the level of audience the service is able to get. But perhaps these could be reduced to more personal, nostalgia-fueled criticisms if the online iteration of BBC Three was doing well. The problem is, it isn't. In the months immediately following BBC Three's linear closure in 2016, audience share amongst younger viewers to the BBC's other TV channels dropped by 20%, confirming fears from the BBC Trust that up to 750,000 viewers who watched the BBC Three channel and nothing else from them could be outright lost through its closure. BBC Three content on BBC iPlayer, their video on demand website, made up 4% of total viewing before the closure, but 11% just afterward. An increase but not enough to offset or justify the losses on linear. BBC Three's main commercial rivals, ITV2 and E4, have greatly benefited from the channel's linear demise, though they haven't done anything new or interesting with it, as expected. ITV2 is more than happy with the rights to Family Guy and American Dad that they got from the BBC in 2017, as well as the success of reality show Love Island and the general bunch of repeats and movies they tend to put out every day. E4 is awash with US imports and are similarly scheduled for the most part. Five Star, which aims for the same audience but rates pitifully by comparison, does have a stronger focus on factual programming, but much of that comprises of series devoted to ogling and poverty. The likes of Can't Pay, Will Take It Away, and Nightmare Tents, Slum Landlords, while at least original productions, aren't of the same caliber or worthiness value BBC Three used to produce. They have their own share of US imports to run too, chances are you'll find the likes of My Wife and Kids and Two and a Half Men somewhere on the schedule. 
Further criticism was lobbed at the BBC in the run-up to the launch of BBC Scotland on February 24th, 2019, a fully separate channel directed at Scotland, mainly running in the evenings and taking over the Scottish-specific opt-outs previously aired on BBC Two. How can they close BBC Three and then turn around a few years later to shell out £32 million a year for a particularly specific, politically convenient new channel? It doesn't help that the channel has faced an uphill battle gaining traction with audiences. Last fall, Ofcom, Britain's answer to America's FCC, released a scathing review of the BBC's performance which revealed that only 49%, under half, of young audiences had watched a BBC TV channel in the week prior to their research survey. A record low. Ofcom further warned that the broadcaster was at risk of losing, quote, a generation of viewers and that the broadcaster's future sustainability would be under threat if it didn't reach more younger audiences. In March 2020, British tabloid The Daily Mail, not the greatest news source, but bear with me, reported that the BBC had been considering relaunching BBC Three as a linear channel. According to insiders quoted for the story, discussions had taken place for such a return, but no concrete decision had been made. Spokespeople at the BBC claim it's just speculation, but didn't rule the idea out. Currently, the online-only BBC Three only reaches 8% of viewers in its 16 to 34 year old target demographic, a pitifully minuscule reach. Now former Ofcom head Sharon White has previously said that BBC Three as a linear channel was closed, quote, probably a number of years too early, confirming what campaigners who fought to save the channel in 2016 had tried to say all along, that the BBC would be jumping the gun in killing the youth-skewing linear channel. Despite the BBC's weak efforts, not much has changed demographically in the four years since the channel's demise. The average age of a viewer of the BBC's other channels is still in their 60s. Tony Hall, who will step down as BBC Director General this summer, told a conference that taking BBC Three off air, quote, was a brave decision and it seemed absolutely right at the time, but suggested that an announcement on the brand's future could be made in the corporation's upcoming annual plan for 2020. Aside from bureaucratic approval, there is very little stopping a return of BBC Three. The evening airspace of CBBC, which BBC Three formerly timeshared with, still remains vacant, so it would be relatively easy to relaunch the channel. However, BBC Three's former channel number has since been reassigned on TV platforms, so the BBC would have a bit of a challenge on their hands, fighting for a prominent position at the likes of Freeview, Sky, and elsewhere. Heavy promotion would likely make up the difference when it comes to audience awareness and set the stage for a well-received return. Despite the BBC learning the impact of shunning young audiences the hard way, multiple other European broadcasters have, or have plans, to close their respective youth channels and move their output, or what remains of it, online. On January 2nd, 2020, Denmark's public broadcaster DR closed their channel for young audiences, DR3, moving its content to DR's existing online on-demand website. The closure was part of a number of cutbacks across DR's operations, meant to save 420 million Danish kroner, about $61.5 million US, a year, though some argue the drastic budget cuts are a political ploy. In France, there have been plans for the past two years to shutter France Télévisions channel France 4, which is effectively analogous to the roles played by CBBC and BBC3 on the other side of the English channel. The proposal to shutter France's youth-skewing public broadcasting channel was met with fears from program producers and creators from France's massive animation industry, which France Télévisions, and France 4 in particular, has been integral to the current success of. On January 3rd, 2020, the day after Dea killed its own youth channel, French media reported that France Televisions had decided to close France Cat on August 9th, with its content and format being split between France Televisions' remaining channels, France 2, France 3, and France 5, and two new online brands which the pubcaster had launched in advance. Perhaps a few years from now, these two public broadcasters will themselves see similar drops in audience reach to what the online BBC3 has found itself with and realize they too made a hasty, terrible mistake. Despite the mystery around the demographic and the allure of streaming services as a supposed future of television, there is still plenty of reason for linear television to exist for years to come. More importantly, there is still plenty of justification for public broadcasters to serve a wide variety of audiences. Young adults, already woefully underserved in favor of mindless commercial ratings chasing, especially included. The likes of BBC Three, France 4, Deatre, and other European contemporaries serve an unglamorous but essential role in widening the breadth of what content aimed at this demographic looks like. They are not simply superficial money pits waiting for the axe, they are important pillars of these broadcasters' wider commitments to public service. Through telling local stories, incubating new talent, 
tackling challenging issues and making them understandable, and offering plenty of quality entertainment along the way, the youth-centric channels of European PSBs help to justify the relevance and necessity of these public broadcasters as a whole, and help to reinforce these publicasters' personal impact in the lives of these viewers, reminding them that the license fee they pay out isn't some nebulous thing that only bankrolls orchestras and news and shows about gardening and house hunting, that it's also delivering offerings that serve them, too. Back in 2016, the Radio Times reported that the BBC were making serious considerations over potentially merging BBC3 and BBC Radio 1 under the same management if the new online version of BBC3 was unsuccessful. Damien Cavanaugh, BBC3's controller, or effectively the channel head, explained that BBC3 was, quote, a really powerful youth brand with 13 years heritage and I wouldn't see the logic in winding down something that has that audience and has that badge of quality and has that heritage. The BBC squandered that heritage by closing BBC3 as a linear channel in the first place. Now, they're realizing the price they're paying for it. If you want the full, painful story behind BBC3's demise, then check out my two-part retrospective on the channel and its downfall. Part 1 is right up here, and Part 2 is down in the description. And if you want more explorations of the world of television just like this, then make sure you subscribe for more new videos every single week. I'm Benzie Johnson Jr., I'm enthusiastic about television, and I'll see you next time.